shop without a lot of funky names. Is it Quingo? Yeah. All right. <laughs> nice. So our, our next speaker is uh, Hanru, who's here to, to talk about Quingo. Um, okay, good afternoon. I'm here to present our new quantum programming language, Quingo. Um, unfortunately, uh, most of our team members were not able to make it here, so uh, I'll try my best to uh, deliver the message um, for them. Um, Quingo is uh, named as a combination of quantum and lingo. It's a high-level uh, programming language for quantum computing. Um, it serves, uh, Quang, uh, Quingo and its implementation serves as the uh, intermediate layer between uh, quantum algorithm and the quantum instruction set architecture. Um, so its goal is to support uh, NISC applications. Um, with our observation, there are two important uh, NISC applications. One is the quantum experiments, uh, which means uh, calibrating qubits and uh, tuning operations. Um, actually, we find that uh, quantum experiments consume most qubit usage time in existing uh, quantum uh, devices. Uh, another important uh, NISC application is um, uh, are those algorithms that utilize uh, heterogeneous uh, quantum and classical computing, such as VQE. Um, um, so this talk, I'm going to uh, further explain the uh, detailed requirements to support these uh, NISC applications and our design choices. Um, so the requirements actually uh, consist of uh, roughly three parts. Uh, first two are for quantum experiment, uh, including explicit timing control and supporting uncalibrated gates. Uh, and the other one is uh, to support explicit quantum classical separation to support heterogeneous quantum classical computation. So let's look at the explicit timing control first. Um, here is an example of the T1 experiment. Um, it's, it's actually a very useful ex uh, experiment in um, bootstrapping a quantum device. Uh, its goal is to, um, uh, to measure the relaxation qubit time, uh, the qubit is uh, relaxation time. Um, to doing, uh, in doing the uh, T1 experiment, we need to uh, change the time interval between, um, here, between the S gate and the measurement. Um, to do this, uh, we have to um, be able to explicitly um, control the, act, the timing between the S gate and the measurement uh, operation. So um, our solution is to provide a weight primitive. Um, here is a, a Kringle code snippet. Uh, uh, it first um, apply an S gate to the target qubit and weight the target for time specified by the interval I, um, uh, and last measure the target and record the result. Um, Quingo actually provide uh, more timing primitives, uh, such as the sync primitive to support uh, uh, synchronizing qubits for a multi-qubit operation. Um, the next requirement is uncalibrated gates. Um, here is an example of the Ruby uh, experiment. In this experiment, uh, we actually have to um, apply X gates with uh, the same envelope but different amplitudes to calibrate the um, to calibrate the uh, angle of X rotations. And so the goal is to customize the amplitude. Um, uh, to do this, our solution is to provide opaque operations along with a customized implementation uh, which uh, resides in a user-defined uh, configuration file. Um, and again, here's a uh, Quingo example for Ruby experiment. Um, the left-hand side is a, uh, is a, a snippet of Quingo code. Uh, here we declare these uh, X operations, uh, uh, the X gate with different uh, amplitudes. And on the uh, right-hand side is the uh, Quingo configuration file, which uh, actually consists of uh, consists the uh, implementation of these uh, X gates with different uh, amplitudes. Here, uh, since our underlying uh, architecture it, uh, is ECASM, we use these uh, ECASM, uh, ECASM instructions to actually implement these uh, operations. Mm, 
so the, the third uh, requirement is uh, an explicit uh, classical and quantum uh, separation. Um, recall the NISC devices usually consist of two parts. Uh, the host CPU, which is a classical part, and the quantum coprocessor uh, usually serves as the uh, accelerator for the host CPU. Uh, also, uh, the quantum algorithms uh, usually have the same structure. Uh, here is an example of a quantum variational energy solver. Uh, the quantum part and the classical part are explicit, explicitly separated, and these two parts interact with each other uh, through the procedure. So following this paradigm, uh, the Quingo is designed as a external um, domain-specific uh, language and emphasis the quantum classical separation. Uh, a whole application usually consists of two parts. It's a uh, hybrid program. The host is a, a classical part of the program, and the uh, kernel is a quantum part, uh, usually, uh, uh, which is implemented in Quingo. Uh, the host could be uh, implemented in uh, any qu uh, classical programming languages. Uh, so the compilation procedure is, is then naturally separated uh, as well uh, into a quantum uh, compilation process and a, a procedure and a classical compilation procedure, uh, resulting in a hybrid binary code, which is then executed on a heterogeneous architecture. Uh, note that uh, since the quantum compilation procedure is uh, separated from the classical compilation, uh, we are able to open more opportunities for uh, compiler optimizations. Uh, in our case, we employ the just-in-time compilation. Um, the motivation is that uh, qubit have limited coherence time and the quantum coprocessor has limited classical computational power. Um, so uh, these uh, limitations force us to minimize the classical uh, computational burden from the quantum kernel. Uh, and just-in-time compilation is just right for this purpose. Um, just-in-time compilation means uh, to trigger the quantum compilation at runtime of the host. Uh, it takes advantage of uh, runtime information such as the input arguments. Um, so it can resolve the classical variables in the quantum kernel and uh, uh, ahead of the quantum kernel execution and uh, opens even more optimization opportunities for quantum gates, such as gate cancellation and communication. Um, uh, here, is a, uh, here is an example to illustrate the power of just-in-time compilation. Uh, on the left-hand side is a uh, Python host program which calls the Kingo procedure F with a uh, argument false. Um, so uh, after calling this uh, Quingo procedure, the just-in-time compilation will then inline the false uh, argument, uh, which in this case will, uh, the JIT compilation uh, procedure will be able to uh, optimize out the, the if branch like this. Uh, further, uh, since the, uh, the Hadamard gates are uh, consecutive, so uh, the JIT compilation could just cancel these operations resulting in a no op. Uh, CASM code. Um, so that's it. Uh, finally, uh, we have a runtime system to put all of these uh, components uh, together. The runtime system uh, serves as an interface between the host and the quantum kernel. Uh, it triggers the JIT compilation and analyzes the return uh, results from the quantum kernel. Uh, note that uh, since the Runtime system decouples the quantum kernel and the host uh, host classical program. Uh, we are able to uh, provide a flexibility for supporting multiple host language and quantum architectures. Um, and as an external domain-specific language, Quingo also features uh, syntax highlighting and uh, editing services in VS Code, which I think is cool. Uh, in the and, and the right hand side is a uh, screen snapshot um, of the Quingo program. Um, so, um, we actually did a brief survey, a survey of the uh, exi existing quantum programming languages uh, with a focus on the, uh, the ability to provide explicit timing control, opaque operations, uh, ex explicit quantum kernel, and 
uh, whether it is uh, an embedded uh, programming language or a external programming language. And we found that um, to the best of our uh, knowledge, Quingo is the only uh, external programming language uh, that support timing control, opaque operations with a concept of explicit quantum kernel. Um, actually, Quingo is still under development and it, it is at a very early stage. Uh, so we seek for a even broader cooperation uh, with uh, experts of a various background. So thank you. If you're interested, welcome to contact us. Let's thank the speaker. <laughs> Questions? I just had a curiosity about that last chart. Why did you list um, being an external language as a plus? Is it? Um, uh, because um, uh, this is one of the reasons. Uh, uh, as an embedded language, uh, it is um, often hard to develop a language service or a syntax highlighting yeah. service. And also, as an external language, you are able to decouple the uh, host language with the quantum part. So provides us the uh, flexibility of the uh, uh, supporting uh, various host languages. Thank you. Hey, thank you for your talk. Uh, Leon from Duke University again. Uh, actually, I have two questions, if, uh, if there's time for that, uh, if you don't mind. Uh, the first one is about um, classical computations in uh, the quantum kernel. Um, I haven't seen that in the Quingo language, though uh, since I'm familiar with ECOSM, I know ECOSM supports that. Yeah. Can you tell me a bit more on what your expectations are on Quingo well, over there? So we assume that the device support uh, classical computation in a quantum kernel, and also classical control on the quantum kernel. So we can use the uh, measurement results as a feedback to, uh, to control the, uh, the following quantum, uh, quantum code. So, so you have uh, syntax uh, and semantics available yeah. in Quingo for that? Um, here, uh, here is an uh, example of the quantum random number generator. Um, oh, no, this is not the example. Sorry. Uh, here is an example. OK. Here, the, the if branch is actually a control structure using a classical variable as the condition, uh, the guard condition. Right. But this is not a runtime process, right? This is the compilation, so kind of the preprocessor. Uh, preprocessor, what do you mean? Uh, here, the Quingo program is actually a, uh, a program for the quantum device, OK, the quantum controller. And it's, it is separate from the host. So uh, the, the classical computation is actually all performed on the quantum kernel. Okay, maybe we should take this offline because I think it's going too far. Okay. Um, thanks. I'll get back to you. Okay. Hi. So I'd like to return to the notion of the opaque uh, opaque gates. Uh, often quantum gates in a quantum computer are, are implemented with you know, multiple or composite analog pulses. Yeah. Uh, how do you represent this? Since it looks like they're applying to directly to qubits. Uh, yeah. How how do you map? Uh, an operation on the multiple, what we might normally call like channels? Um, I think I'm not able to answer this question. So okay. um, you can contact my colleague to find the answer out. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Let's thank the speaker again. And then that's the end of this session. Enjoy your coffee. <laughs>